In this problem, we have two concentric, or center-sharing, spherical shells. The inner shell has a uniform positive charge, uh, Q sub 1, and the outer shell has a uniform negative charge, negative Q sub 2. We know that Q sub 1 and Q sub 2 have opposite charges, but we're not told anything about the magnitude of those charges relative to one another. We are, however, asked to qualitatively sketch the electric field lines of this system for the situations where Q sub 1 has a greater magnitude than Q sub 2, Q sub 2 is greater than Q sub 1, and where both magnitudes are equal. First, let's deal with the simplest situation, where the charge magnitudes are equal. Conventionally, electric field lines are drawn in such a way that they originate at positive charges and terminate at negative charges, so we'll at least need to draw some electric field lines pointing from the inner shell to the outer shell. Also, the density of the electric field lines, or the crowdedness of the lines, is meant to be proportional to the magnitude of the field, a quantity that is proportional to the originating charge. Therefore, if the magnitudes of both charges are equal, then the amount of electric field that is shown originating from the positively charged shell should be equal to the amount of electric field that we show terminating at the negatively charged shell. So the only electric field lines that we draw will be ones that directly interact between these two shells. So I will draw them here. It's also worth keeping in mind that electric field lines are generally drawn normal or at right angles to the charged surface with which it's interacting. So try to make your lines straight and not too curvy relative to one another. Now let's try to deal with the case where Q sub 1's magnitude is greater than the magnitude of Q sub 2. Once again, we apply the same principles and conventions that we applied to the previous case. Since the positive charge has the higher magnitude in this case, not all of the electric field produced by the inner sphere will terminate at the outer sphere. Some of it will, but the rest will continue traveling on outside of this system. So let's take the sketch we drew for the previous case and draw some additional field lines traveling further outside of the shell. Because the negative outer shell already absorbed some of the electric field from the inner shell, be careful to make the field lines outside less dense or further apart from one another to indicate that the field is weaker outside than it was between the shells. So I will draw fewer lines on the outside of the outer shell to indicate uh, a weaker electric field on the outside. In the final case, the magnitude of Q sub 2 is greater than the magnitude of Q sub 1, indicating that the charge on the outer shell is more negative than the inner shell is positive. This means that although all of the electric field from the inner shell will terminate at the outer shell, there is still room for more field lines to terminate by traveling into the outer shell. To indicate this, I will draw additional field lines from outside the system that end at the negative shell. We have now illustrated the electric field lines for all three cases.